Welcome to episode 5 of designing a CNC epoxy granite desktop mill. In this series I'm focusing on why doing it one way as opposed to another. This particular episode I'm going to focus on attaching the column to the base. It needs to be a really secure attachment so that the cutting forces don't tilt it and it needs to add a provision for tram so that the Z ways would be perpendicular to the XY plane. Onshape has a really neat feature, it's called branching. Here's where we ended last time, and I have one, two, three, four different branches on four different iterations of the attachment from the column to the base. I have them in these four tabs that are already open. So the first one I'm calling flat plate. So this one's the simplest, but has a bolt, or this would actually be a stud, going through the base and through this plate. This is an aluminum plate, one inch thick and that would be cast as part of the column and it would have screws going into the column a few inches with heads on them for retention. This is only modeled quarter so this would be mirrored here and then that set would be mirrored to the other side and it would be a little bit wider. You can see I widened this to allow room for the nut and a wrench to go around the nut. This here is a socket head cap screw which would be used to set the tram and then epoxy would be in between here exactly what I did for this scenario. I just didn't put all these details in because I'm still brainstorming this. One thing I don't like about this, when there's a cutting forces and this column wants to move, will be taken by the bolts that would be inside of this plate and going about this high. Maybe they'll be three or four inches high. I don't know how secure that would be. However, I have seen other epoxy granite machines on YouTube that were much bigger that were built that way and they seem to be doing okay. Commercial milling machines are built this way, but it's one piece of cast iron. The iron has a much greater stiffness and strength than the epoxy granite and aluminum. So that's the first choice. The next one I'm going at a medium height. This version here, it's pretty much the same thing. It just moves this surface up. And now the bolt or the stud is really long. This is that same aluminum plate on the bottom. But now the attachment strength of this plate to the rest of the column doesn't matter because this whole area of the column is in compression from this stud and the two nuts. That makes me feel a lot better about the strength of the column resisting the tilting tendencies from the cutting forces. To do the tram on this, it's the same system with, with set screws. You need this cut out here so you can get to the set screw. A ball head Allen key can reach that. Remember, this would be mirrored, so this is only the quarter system. So this and this would be mirrored to the other side and then mirrored to this side. Looking at that now, maybe this feature here for the tram could be moved to the back because the back is wider because when this is mirrored the other one will be pretty close to it right about here so maybe it's too close to do a good tram so this was the next option uh, medium height now after I looked at this I was thinking well you know this is great because this stud puts this whole area in compression on the column so let me show you the third one the third one is called a uh, tall and enclosed I ran the stud all the way from the top to the bottom it might seem like overkill but it does a few things one is it puts the entire column in compression. I don't know how similar epoxy granite is to concrete, but in concrete it's really good in compressive strength, but very poor in tensile strength. That's why concrete always has to have rebar in it if it's anything structural. Another thing you can do with concrete columns in buildings, if they are always in compression, no matter which way the forces act on it, then they're really, really strong even without rebar. I believe what this will do, and remember there will be four of these, they will always keep the column in compression even if there's a cantilevered force from the end mill pushing on the column. As long as that force is less than the compressive force applied by the four studs and nuts, then the column would always remain in compression. That's quite appealing to me. I think that's a good design for this type of material that maybe isn't that good in tension compared to compression. The last version I call it tall external and it's the same as the last one but cuts away this portion of the column so that the stud is exposed. I think the only difference between this one and this one, this one's a little bit stronger but this one's lighter. Where this one might be a little bit weaker it's this cantilevered surface here which the nut bears against. 
I have a one inch thick aluminum plate here. That might be still plenty, plenty strong for what we're talking about. On, on all of them, actually, this hole would be a clearance hole for the stud. The stud wouldn't be cast into it. Otherwise, it defeats the whole purpose. There would actually be a PVC pipe in here during the casting process, and then the stud would be free to slide in and out of that once the casting is complete. The stud has to be able to stretch. That is the main principle that keeps the tension in place. This first version here, this bolt here being a few inches long compared to this bolt here, or this stud being significantly longer, this one here is going to stretch more and that will keep the clamp force larger and more reliable over time with vibrations and with forces applied to the column. The more stretch there is on the bolt, as long as you don't reach yield, the better it performs. On this one, this one, and this one, this top surface would be an aluminum plate that's part of the casting that would go across and there would be a washer that would bear on that surface. On the bottom, what I show is this aluminum plate is also part of the main casting of the base. That's also where the feet would go and there would be a leveling pad on it when this is set on a table. This nut sticking down wouldn't be a problem because there would be a foot here. These are the four basic designs. The flat plate, the shortest one, this is the medium height, this is the tall one that's enclosed, and this is the tall one that is external. Let me know your thoughts, which are your favorite. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next episode.